It's May 28th, 2019. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about finding patterns, analyzing a piece, perhaps away from the harp, how that can help both with memorizing a piece or with just reading it and learning it or sight reading it, working for music, just generally it can be a really beneficial thing. And as an example, I'm going to use this section from Primavera. And I just released a music video of me playing this a few weeks ago. You should be seeing a link. And it's a piece where there's a lot of repetition, very minimalist in, in some ways, but also there's some slight differences. So you might have a four bar section that repeats, but just with a slight difference. And so it's funny because I, I was learning this and I was just sight reading through it, right? I was able to sight read and that was okay. But then I worked with it with a student with this. And one of the great things about teaching, right, is, is that when you're working with students, you're trying to demonstrate sort of what the ideal way is to approach a piece. And, one, and with a section like this, I think the ideal way is to analyze and see, okay, I know just from playing through it, there's a, there's a lot of similarities. And, and also it's not completely the same each four bars, for example. So the best thing to do is to kind of look at that, not rely on yourself just from playing it to notice those differences, but to actually go through the music and try and find them. So let me play you this uh, eight bar phrase. Um, anyway, so I went through that with my student and, and that was just so helpful for myself at least because I was able to see these patterns and it just made it easier. I didn't end up memorizing the piece as you can maybe see from the video, but in terms of my fluency from sight reading it, just makes it that extra bit easier. So for example, we'll look through as I say, there's a four bars that are almost the same, right? But we want to look for patterns and find out why are they not quite the same? What's going on here? Well, the left hand pattern is actually, I don't have a slow F on this harp, the same. The right hand pattern, what we see is that the fourth bar is slightly different each time. So the first time this, that leads us back to a repeat of the first four bars, sort of a repeat. And the second time, moving into this. Oops, sorry. Etc. So a slight difference there and just being aware of that. Okay, right. So I get to this fourth bar and I just have to be aware of which ending sort of is it. And then noticing that the right hand in the first three bars that repeat, it's always doing two, one, two, one, two, one. But the second time through, on the second bar, it's D, E, D, E, D, E, instead of C, E, C, E, C, E. Aha! So with just that information, it suddenly becomes much clearer. Again, instead of having to read note by note, we can maybe see these bigger patterns and that right hand is going to stay on this. First ending, here we are, and now we know we're going to switch to this. second ending. And now here we can see there's another four bar. Again, let's say we look at the left hand, right? C, this, um, uh, sorry, I haven't played this for a while, but, um, that C, E, F, A, B, C, E, F, A, B, Great, the left hand's repeating. Is the right hand repeating? Well, almost. Again, we have these, these subtle changes. So again, the fourth bar, there's a slight difference. The first time through, we get uh, back up to this E, G, E, G, E, G. And the second time through, we get, hey, we're back to that first group of four, that first, those first four bars that we had, that A section, perhaps. So just like the A section, the fourth bar has two different endings, as it were. And then 
Again, let's look at what the right hand's doing in those first three bars. It's almost the same. Now, instead of two, one, two, one, two, one, it's one, two, one, two, one, two. Almost always G, E, G, E, G, E, but every once in a while, it's G, F. There's a single F thrown in there. And so the first group of four bars, it happens on the first bar. There it is, and now it's... That first bar is all just G E. The F happens in the second bar. So we can just be aware of we're going to go back and forth with these first three bars each time, except the end of the first bar we have an F the first time through, and the end of the second bar we have an F the second time through, so that we get. section and what we notice here is the right hand follows that same pattern of the first time through first three bars it's just this second time through one bar of the C E C E C E then D E then C E and the left hand is the same except instead of playing when we get when we start each group of four instead of playing this C on the downbeat it's on the second quarter note beat. So instead of it's one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two. First ending, missing, you know, here's the downbeat. D this time. Second ending. Oh, and now we're, we're back to the B section. And again, F happens in the first bar. Second bar, here comes the F. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and now what's going on? This looks like it might be this B section again, and sure enough it is. So that means the first time through there's an F. First ending. First bar, so here comes the second bar with the F. ending, but it leads us into the etc, etc. So, in fact, there, there's just of, of, of a seemingly fairly long section that if we were just kind of reading through it, we might think, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of repetition, but I don't know, I'm, I'm just going note by note, and I'm never quite sure what's going next, and did I make sure to catch that F when it occurred, and all that. In fact, there are basically only eight bars here, right? We get the A section, which is four bars repeated with, with the changing. Second time through, we have that D. And we get the B section, which um, has the uh, F, right? That, that, that comes in uh, first time in the first bar and second time in the second bar. And the only final variation is that A section, the second time we hear it, We've got this one and two and three and one and two and one and two and three and one and two and three and two. that C coming in on beat two. So a great example, I think, of how analyzing something, and again, maybe away from the harp, just looking for these patterns, can be so powerful in terms of our grasp of the piece. And there's this idea of chunking, right? That when you look at people with apparently prodigious memory. So a classic example is chess players. And you might look at grandmasters who can be blindfolded and play multiple games at the same time. And you think, what an amazing memory. And chances are they might have a slightly better memory than the average person. But what people find is, so for example, you can show a board position, a chess board position to a grandmaster and, and, a, and a novice or, or, or somewhat accomplished chess player for a brief moment of time and ask them, take it away and then ask them to reproduce that board position. And the grandmasters are outstanding at that. And, and the, you know, the, 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 the somewhat decently ranked chess players are, are much worse. But what people have found is that if you 
show both these players a chessboard with a position that could not have occurred through a game, so just random pieces on that. The Grandmasters might be slightly better, but they're nowhere near as good as they used to be, because what they're doing is not memorizing each individual piece on that board. They're chunking, they're, they're memorizing a position that they know might have occurred and, and that they have connections to. And so, same thing with, with music. The more that we can find a way to attach meaning to individual notes, the easier it is to memorize or to find patterns. So instead of, again, seeing a string of how many notes in a row, wow, there's a whole bunch of notes in this section. I mean, it's constant eighth notes in the right hand, right? So given that we have um, six per bar, that's a lot of notes if we had to memorize each of them. But if we can condense all that information into a smaller chunk, all we have to memorize, as I say, is basically two chunks, this A and this B section, and the slight differences between them. So anyway, a super useful tool sometimes to just take a piece of music and analyze it, perhaps away from the harp, perhaps with a harp, but by being very conscious of looking for patterns and looking for differences. So um, hope you enjoyed that. And oh, I want to say a shout out and a happy birthday to Nicole, um, because her son emailed me to let me know that she's a big fan of the show and that today is her birthday. So happy birthday. I will um, be back in two weeks time. I'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>